What is going on Diablo 2 fans? Dobrunsky here and I am back with another human bot project. This is going to be my final human bot for a while. So I thought I would go with a bang. I did 1000 bail runs for 31 noteworthy drops, one grailer and one super trollish drop, probably the worst troll drop that I've ever had in Diablo 2. So yeah guys, I really do hope you enjoy this video. Let's jump in. So before I dive into recapping the loot from these 1000 bail runs, there's three important points that I want to touch on. And the first is how long did this project take for me to complete? Because I know that people are going to ask this in the comment section below. So if you ask how long it took, you clearly skipped this portion of the video. But roughly, we're talking about three minutes per run times 1000 runs. So that in itself is a lot of time. And on top of that, probably about 10 hours of recording audio, uh, video editing, and doing artwork for the video. So yeah, definitely a lot of time and effort went into this video. The second point that I want to touch on is that you guys will notice midway through this video that some of the items are going to be changing colors, and that is because I started using a loot filter partway through this project. So if you guys have no idea what a loot filter is, I have a link in the description for a previously made video where I go over how to set up and configure your own loot filter. I do highly encourage you guys to give it a shot if you're on single player it is a godsend and since i've started using loot filter i honestly can't go back to playing without one unless i'm just doing a standard playthrough and i also do highly encourage you guys to join the discord again the link is in the description we have a channel that is set up specifically for posting your custom loot filter configuration so if you guys want to kind of tweak what i have or use somebody else's loot filter definitely just go to that channel and you can download the config file throw it into your loop filter uh, folder settings and then you're good to go. And the third and final point that I want to touch on is what player's difficulty setting and how much percent MF did I have on my Lightning Sorceress. So I teleported down to Bale on player's one difficulty. I cleared the throne room just to speed things up a little bit. And then I went to player's eight for all five Bale waves to maximize experience. And then I went down to player's three for Bale specifically. And that is because his experience is capped out at player's three. So killing him on players 5 or 7, he's just harder to kill with no extra experience gain. And I really wanted to focus on trying to maximize experience and then magic find kind of second hand for this video. Leading into my second uh, bridge waypoint is I had 150% MF with this sorceress. And yeah, again, this was mostly focused on trying to grind out experience. You guys can see how much experience I had starting this video and then finishing it. So we definitely got a nice noticeable chunk of our way towards 99 although unfortunately i did die twice which set me back about 200 runs this really hurt i only was able to clip the second death i don't have the first one uh, but i did manage to recover my body both times so again it set me back about 200 runs or so i would say but that uh covers everything they wanted to talk about for this video kind of the frequently asked questions so let's dive into all of the best drops from 1000 bail runs in diablo 2. The first noteworthy item from this human bot project drops from Bale on run 4. It's a unique matriarchal javelin, which is Thunderstroke. This pair rolled nearly perfect on the enhanced damage and the javelin and spear skills. Thunderstroke is actually my preferred javelin for the Javazon because of the massive damage increase it provides from the minus 15% enemy lightning resistance. 27 bail runs later, a unique troll nest drops, which is Headhunter's Glory another item that I can use on the Javzon. Fortunately, this shield rolled three open sockets, which I plan on putting three lightning facets inside of to maximize my Javzon's lightning damage for farming the secret cow level. Just over 50 runs into this human bot project, Bale drops a grail item. It's a unique legendary mallet, which rolled Schaefer's hammer. This is an interesting item to use on melee characters because of the percent chance to cast static field on striking. But to be honest, I was just pumped to cross an item off of my grail list with less than 100 runs completed. Just 12 runs later, an ohm rune drops off of bail wave number 2. I don't typically ever drop anything special off of the bail wave, so an ohm rune is definitely an exciting drop for me. Another really big ticket item drops off of bail on run 124. It's a unique phase blade, which rolled Azeroth. This can be a somewhat challenging item to find because it can also roll as a unique item lightsaber. This one rolled about average, but it's still a pretty cool drop off a of bail. 
28 runs later, a nice item drops again off of Bale Wave number 2. It's a facet which rolled 5 4 level up poison. I plan on socketing this facet into my 2 minus 49 death web that I found a few months ago in the pits on my Pit Singer. The first somewhat trollish item drops from Bale on run 175, a unique Scourge that unfortunately rolled Horizon's Tornado instead of the more valuable Stormlash. I have however had some pretty solid drops so far off of Bale so I really can't complain much about this one. My favorite class specific item drops 11 runs later. The Herald of Zacharoom is one of the most versatile items in the game. While it may not necessarily be the very best in slot item for specific Paladin builds, it's still an excellent choice for Zealers, Hammerdens, and even Smiters. Nothing too exciting for about 40 runs until a useful weapon base drops off of a trash mob in the throne room. It's a 6% enhanced damage, 1 to attack rating, 5 open socket superior phase blade. This is a nice base to roll the rumor grief in, even though the additional percent enhanced damage doesn't add very much to the overall damage. I typically never find very useful rare items on these human bot projects, but that changes about a quarter of the way into these runs. Bill drops a rare tiara that rolled 2 to assassin skills, 20% faster cast rate, with 14% to all resistances. In most scenarios, Shaka would be a better helmet to use on the Assassin, but this circlet could be useful for a dual claw wielding Trapson, depending on the other gear that is used. Bill drops the second big troll item on run 261. It's an ethereal rib cracker which rolled 1% off of anti perfect enhanced damage. This can be an awesome weapon to use on a Fury Druid if you up it and socket it with a Zod Rune, but I just can't justify doing that on a Rib Cracker that rolled so horrible for enhanced damage. 25 runs later, a big set item drops from the first Bale Wave. It's a set Vortex Shield, which is Griswold's Honor. This is a pretty rare set item, but I would have much rather seen the Cadiceus drop because I'm still hunting for a 4 open socket version of that item for a future Fireclaw Druid build. I go on a bit of a dry spell for almost 100 runs until a really nice Andariel's Visage drops. This one rolled 29 to Strength and 10% Life Leech. Unfortunately, it didn't roll Ethereal. I still would like to at some point use an ethereal version on my mercenary if RNGs ever decides to let one drop. A duplicate unique item drops just 30 runs later. It's another unique legendary mallet, except this time it rolled Stone Crusher instead of Schaefer's Hammer. Now that I have both versions of this item, it doesn't really bother me as much to see it roll Stone Crusher instead of the much better version, Schaefer's Hammer. The trend of duplicate uniques continues again on run 457. Another unique Scourge and another Horizon's Tornado from Bale. Bale drops a bit of a surprise for me 30 runs later. He spawns a declone during wave 1, but my max damage setup takes him down very quickly and nets me a decent anti charm that rolled 18 to attributes. 14% to all resistances, and 10% experience gained. I finally find an item that I've been hunting for for ages about 50 runs later. It's an ethereal Hyperion Spear, which is Ariok's Needle. This is a really valuable mercenary weapon to use on a Player's 1 Magic Finding Corpse Exploding build because it adds a lot of deadly strike the mercenary when it's combined with the helmet G face. I have a link for this niche magic finding build in the description if you guys want to check it out. On run 628, Bill drops what I think is one of the coolest items so far. It's a unique Shaco, which is Harlequin Crest, but it rolled a perfect 141 defense with an item level of 99, making it in my eyes to be a really cool trophy item. An awesome candidate for a Chamrun to be used on a Pitzerker or a Trapson. 
An interesting ethereal item drops off of Bale about 70 runs later. It's a Conqueror Crown, which is Halibur's Reign. This has to be the most useless class specific barbarian item, but at least it rolled ethereal to cross another item off of my Eth Grail list. Two really nice unique items drop within the next 30 runs. A 13% cold damage Nightwings on run 714, followed by a 2 open socket, 27 to strength Giant Skull on bail run 729. Two very useful items with really good rolls close together. I find a really, really godly base off of wave number 4 on run 763. It's an ethereal vortex shield with 41 all resistances. I'm going to save this shield to be ebugged live on stream to hopefully roll a really nice exile in it. But to be completely honest, I'm almost afraid to ebug this shield because of the possibility to completely brick the base and not get the desired four open sockets. I get the single most ultimate troll drop ever from Bale just five runs later. It's an ethereal cryptic axe, which is Tomb Reaver. This is one of the most desirable weapons for a Fury Druid, but I completely ran out of RNG and rolled one open socket out of the three max sockets. What makes this drop hurt even more is that it rolled nearly perfect on the enhanced damage, percent magic find, and all resistances. This is probably one of the biggest letdown drops that has ever happened to me in Diablo 2. Just three runs after that, Bale drops a really cool pair of set items, a set amulet and a set swirling crystal. The Tal's orb isn't that special on its own, but the fact that I dropped Tal's amulet and Tal's orb off of the same Bale drop makes it a pretty cool double drop. Fifty-two runs later, I find my second high room. I expected more high runes clearing the Bellways on players eight. But 833 runs in only netted me a total of two home runes. Two more unique items more than 70 runs later. Another Azrath off of Bale on run 901, followed by a 14% cold damage Nightwings on run 940. I think it's pretty cool that I've dropped numerous double drops during these Bale runs, marking two Azraths, two Nightwings, two Horizon Tornadoes, two Omeroons, and two unique Legendary Mallets. A super useful Small Charm drops on run 966. It's a 7% MF, 10 to mana Small Charm. This is an awesome Small Charm for any heavily mana dependent magic finding character like a Trapsin, Poison Necromancer, or a Pit Zerker. The very final duplicate unique item drops from Bale seven runs later. It's a nether giant skull. This one rolled even better than the previous one with two Tobin sockets and plus 31 to strength. The very last noteworthy item drops off of Bale wave number two and run 989. It's a plain cold skiller for the sorceress. Plus life ref HR would have been preferable, but it's a pretty solid drop to wrap up this 1000 bail run project. Well guys, there you have it. That wraps up my 1000 bail run human bot project. I really do hope you guys enjoyed this video. Overall, I thought the loot was a little bit interesting. A lot of duplicate drops like double night wings, double giant skulls, double horizons tornadoes. I was a little bit surprised that I only dropped two high runes. I thought maybe doing Player's 8 Bale Waves over the course of a thousand runs, I'd maybe drop a couple more high runes, but we only ended up with two Ohm runes. Of course, we had the 41 Ulrez Eth Vortex Shield, which I am literally afraid to e-bug. The ultimate troll drop of the one open socket Eth Tomb Reaver, and then we wrapped everything up with a Grailer really early on. Less than 100 runs in, I got Schaefer's Hammer. So overall, I was... I'd say satisfied with the drops, despite the fact that these bail runs took forever. But guys, I really do hope you enjoyed this video. A lot of effort and time went into it. So if you could throw a like on it, uh, share it, and even consider subscribing. If you're new to my channel, I post new weekly content and stream on a consistent basis. So there's always new stuff to look forward to and your support with the sub would mean a lot. Other than that, guys, I hope you have a fan frickin' tastic day and I'll see you on my next Diablo 2 video or live stream. Peace out. Yeah.